guys, Ash here coming at you today in Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you here. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your day to chat with me. Some Ray Shadow Legends. It's going to be a good one today. Uh, before that, though, last video, I left you. I was on my way to my son's pre-K graduation. And, oh, man, if I am crying during a pre-K graduation, that I have no idea what's in store for me for the rest of his life. Well, you know what? In my defense, here's a picture of me and the boy, right, at the, uh, the pre-K graduation. In my defense, I blame the teachers. Are you out of your goddamn mind? I, I kid, I love the teachers. Support your local teachers, right? But it's kind of like emotional terrorism when you have these kids, these little kids, sing these slow songs about how I'm growing up, I'm, I'm a big kid now, and I'm just like, oh! I had my glasses, though, to hide the tears. But it was a great time. Uh, thanks to all the well wishes out there in the comments on, on yesterday's video when I was leaving at the end of that recording. Today, actually, I saw my man. I always give this guy a shout out. I, I was on a video with Darth asking for my most underrated content creator in the scene. There's so many of them, it's hard to pick, honestly. I like Mad Capper. I mean, I could just keep naming and naming. Uh, maybe I'll start doing a shout out at the end of every video to a channel that I would really, really dig. Tyraku's another one. Uh, Mad Capper. Like, these are just a few guys out there. But anyway, YS was the dude that I told Darth that I love. Liar! And I'm not logged into my YouTube account. I do watch his videos, but he uploaded this video just a few hours ago from this time. This epic is a problem. Smacks harder than Genbo. I think he might have changed that title. I could be crazy, but I thought that he had Jir uh, Jirigid at first. Either way, either way. So it smacks really hard. Who's his secret weapon? So he got me, man. He got me. I clicked on it, and I would refer all you guys to this video because it's going to be a lot longer than my video. He goes more in depth. He does dungeon stuff. He talks about why he loves him, why he's his secret weapon. So basically, you should just go watch YST's video and click off me. Thank you for the happiest year. But if you're inclined to give me a few minutes of your time, I max this champion from scratch just to check it out, just to see, to fact check YST. YST, if you're watching, you're being fact checked, bro. Fact checked. I'm the guy your boss brought here to show you how it's done. Uh, so, first off, uh, who is this dude anyway? He is a Shadowkin champion. He's an epic champ. I want to say there was like a guaranteed event or maybe even like a fragment summon or something for this dude. There was something for him. Maybe it's on Hell Hades. What is it? What does it say? He was a. Ba -ba 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 -ba. He was uh, released as part of a mini fusion. Of, a mini fusion. There we go. A mini fusion. So I never went for the mini fusion, did you guys? Uh, and I never invested in the champion, right? His base stats leave a lot to be desired. 815 on the defense, are you kidding me? Squishy, squishy, squishy. Uh, 1376, not great, not awful uh, for an attack based champion. Hoping for like 1400 plus, but whatever. Uh, HP 16, almost 17K, okay there. What does this dude do? Okay, first of all, what does he look like? I mean, he's got the he's got the YST mask thing going on. He loves mask champions. Uh, Nagorio, by the way, did I even say his name yet? You ruined the moment. Nagorio is his, is the dude's name, right? On the A one, double commas, commas attacks one enemy two times. Plays an extra hit. The champions is under an increased attack buff. Each hit has a twenty percent chance of placing a block active skills for two turns. Not a bad A1 at all, right? On the A2. Abduct by Night. I like the name of that one. On a three-turn cooldown, attacks one enemy when booked. Attacks one enemy, plays a block bust for two turns. If this champion is under an increased attack buff, steals all buffs from the target enemy before attacking. I really like this ability. You know, one thing in this game that the longer it goes on, you, 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 maybe you're like, maybe you're not, but maybe you're a new player, you haven't experienced this yet. But I start to grow this healthy appreciation for champions that do things that I never really cared about back in the day. You know, like, for example, when I started playing, I didn't care about extending duration of buffs. It was just like, oh, cool, extends duration of buffs. Who cares? And now I'm like, how did I not recognize how valuable that is? One of the strongest moves you can have in the game. And this is one that's been creeping up on me. Stealing buffs before attacking. It's so freaking strong, man. Like, now it's catching my eye, stealing buffs before attacking. So we can just steal, straight up steal all their buffs if they're under an increased attack. That's really cool. 
Uh, furthermore, the multipliers are really cool. We'll get to that in just one moment. On the A3, faster than the I. Attacks all enemies, decreases the cooldown of this skill by one turn when attacking under an increased attack buff. So it's on a four-turn cooldown when both, but essentially it makes it like a four-turn cool, a three-turn cooldown, excuse me, as long as he's under an increased attack. So under increased attack, which he's always gonna be, because we're gonna set him up by golly with an increased attack champion in the arena, obviously. And then uh murderer's lust. Places an increased attack on this champion for two turns whenever an enemy's HP drops below 30%. This buff cannot be removed, so a protected increase attack, it, albeit on a three-turn cooldown, but it's nice that he has that also in his kit. However, we do want to set him up with like an Arbiter or, you know, a Mithrala or somebody with an increased attack because we want him to have that increased attack to get the other champions below 30% HP. That's the goal, right? But a nice passive there nonetheless, especially especially through the duration of a longer battle. So let's take a look, thanks to hellhades.com. Let's take a look at the multipliers on this dude and how does he stack up against some of our other favorite nukers out there in the game. On the A1, he has a 1.2 damage multiplier. It's a strong overall rating, okay. He has a 5.2 on the A2, a 5.2 multiplier is pretty dang good. Uh, to put that into con some comparison, I want to say that like Quietude from Constantine uh, is like a 6.2. Overkill from Bellinor is like a 6.8. Somewhere in that neighborhood, I might be a few decimal points off there. Uh, or not decimal points off, but a few fractions off. Uh, but you know, that's that's it, it's good. It's good. 5.2 is pretty good for an epic, right? For a single target. Uh, and then faster than the I, his A3, his AoE attack has a 4.5 godlike rating. Ooh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's pretty dang good. So how does that 4.5 multiplier stack up to Genbo? Because that's the champion that he compared him to. Genbo's AoE is a four, uh, it's a four. So not a 4.5, just a four. Thing about Genbo though, is he's bringing his own increased crit rate and his own increased crit damage, then taking an extra turn. So that's gonna be very hard to beat, frankly. I like Genball more. I'm just going to ruin it by telling you that out the gate. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. Yannicka. How about Yannicka? A lot of you guys were on me for not including Yannicka on my top 15 AoE nukers in PvE. So maybe I should revisit some Yannicka. Uh, either way, she has a, her single target. Again, it's a 6.3. So that's what we're looking at at legendary single targets. Her AoE, though, is a 3.6. 3.6, okay? She is getting extra damage uh, depending on the shield value of the opponent, but still, 3.6. How about Astralon on his AoE? On his AoE, on his single target, a 5.8. On his AoE, a 4. Again, we have 4.5 on Nagorio. Uh, so those are like a few comparisons to Ron. I'm not going to show you every nuker in the game, uh, but I will say this. Very, very interesting. I didn't realize he had that crazy of multipliers. The downside, of course, is as we look at a champion like, just to be fair here, uh, we look at who do we compare? Astralon, for example, right? Astralon's base attack is 1619. So, I mean, those multipliers, it's grading on a scale, obviously. So, Astralon's still going to hit harder with his AoE than uh, Nagorio is. Nag 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 Nagorio. Not Nagorio. Dude, you know what? One thing one thing that sucks about me, as if you haven't noticed already, is my pronunciation, I would say, is what, a D? D plus, maybe, on champions? But then my pronunciation on Shadowkin is probably an F. F minus. Is that even a thing? It's bad, man. I'm really bad at, like, Japanese names, if you couldn't tell. So I'm gonna call him Nagorio. 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 I don't know why I say it with a weird accent, but hey. Let's take this dude into the arena. Real quick, I want to show you the build. Sorry, I feel like I've been going into so many side tangents this video a little bit more than you're used to. I apologize. Uh, obviously, Magic Affinity. I do have him a five-star Awaken, so that's pretty cool. I threw him in some lethal and some crit damage gear. His total stats here, you can see 198, 103, 265, 4,600 on the attack. I have speed on the boots. I have attack percentage on the chest piece, and I have crit damage on the gauntlets. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we have lethal here. We're just looking for crit damage. Crit rate as our substats. Some attack, if we can find it. A little bit of speed works well as well. We do have attack on the banner. Made a decision there to sacrifice some uh, some accuracy to get that attack on. I did go support tree. I'll show you the masteries in just a moment. So 185 is quite low on the accuracy. We have crit damage on the amulet. We have attack on the reaction ring. On the masteries, we went down. We picked up Helm Smasher. We did go support tree because, frankly... I 
I do want to steal all buffs if I can on that A2. So I did pick up charge, uh, pinpoint accuracy, charge focus, and swarm smiter. Get a little bit extra accuracy that's not going to show up on the actual stats right now. I figure if I target another nuker, right? then I'm likely, with that much accuracy, still likely to steal their buffs. Because no one builds nukers, or very, very seldom, 99% of the time, no one's building a nuker with super high resistance. So 220 or 30 or 40 resist, uh, accuracy, which is what I have, including the masteries, ought to be enough to go after their nukers, at least, to steal all their buffs. Anyway, I digress. Offense, we went with Ruthless Ambush, Opportunist, Bring It Down, Helm Smasher, Shield Breaker. Those are my favorite masteries to have on an Arena Nuker, okay? Uh, let's go into the Arena now. Actually, one last thing. Phantom Touch Blessing. I feel like Phantom Touch is the way to go to get that extra crit damage, that extra attack. It all makes sense to me. Uh, of course, we could go with uh, Cruelty as well. That would be another option on this champion. We still get the attack and crit damage, decrease their defense a little bit. Uh, I guess the only other option would be Crushing Rend, perhaps. Uh, first two hit, so we'll ignore a little bit of their defense. Uh, won't be a ton, so, you know, you can decide what makes sense for you. The cool thing is, though, with Phantom Touch especially, this dude is actually a pretty viable Fire Knight champion. He can get an extra hit if he's under increased attack, so that's a triple hitter right there. And then another extra hit, counting as, with Phantom Touch. So you can get a quad hit on the A1, so I would say this champion outside of arena in faction wars he could be great for fire knight right let me see what his reviews are for fire knight here Hallelujah. fire knight is 3.9 nah 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 i think he's definitely like really good for a quadruple hitter you don't find those or I I'm, I'm being kind but at least a triple hit maybe a quad hit if you get the phantom touch arena offense 4.4 so let's see what yst was talking about what do you say guys i've done enough rambling you've heard enough uh, Live Arena just closed. I was going to take him for a little spin in Live Arena. Right now, dude, I I went on a little bit of... I'm 519 in the world in Live Arena. Went on a little bit of a losing streak, man. I had issues. Actually, you guys saw, if you watch my Champion Guide channel, you saw I, I, I disconnected in like four battles in a row. Dude, I hate that. I hate disconnecting because I'm like, my win rate is tanking. I was 68%, now I'm 65%. <laughs> this is the squad. This is the squad. We got Kaimar, Yameko, a debuffer, Madam Saris, and our man, the man of the hour. Now, wait a second here. Wait, wait, this is not a good team for him. Where's the increased attack champion? We need Arbiter on this, on this, uh, the team. All right, it's, it's, it's cool, it's cool. We'll go in here. Let's see how much he does without increased attack, right? Uh, so this is faster than the eye. 63k? Okay, not bad, but he didn't have increased attack, man. I need to go back in there and give him the big buff that he needs, right? Comes back in there, goes with the A3 again. He's definitely hitting hard. We made, we, we, we turned this team into uh, to mince meat. Nice and easy, nice and easy. All right, let's go. Let's set up a proper team here, though, Ash. Let's go against Genbo, because that's the dude that he's supposed to be better than, right? Huh? All right, let's go in here, and let's just make a little alteration to this team. Uh, I'm going to put Mithrala Lifebane in there, because... My Arbiter's half naked right now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I put her gear on Yameko, who we just took out of the team, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Any of you guys have problems finding champions like I do? It's crazy. She's plus one. I know that. And she's probably right in front of my face. She is. Indeed. We want to make sure that she leads off with her A2, not her A3. So we'll put that as an opener. And there we go. All right. Let's see. Hopefully, we win this speed battle. Mithral is going to go first. Now we have everything set up here. I'm gonna come in and CC the enemy team. We're gonna set up with the decreased defense. All right, we're ready. Well, let's, I guess just let's cleanse our team. I don't wanna, okay. Now everything's set up. No weaken though on the enemy team, but we have increased attack. Okay, around 90K per hit. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, let's go against this squad. They got a Krisk. You know what? I'm gonna take Madame Saris out. <sighs> Taking Madame Saris out is a pain because then I can wake him up, what Kaimar does. Let's do one more round like this, and then I wanna set up with a Weaken too. Maybe I'll throw like, I don't know, a, a Lydia in there, okay? All right, so they go first, that's not good. Can we recover is the big question. Come in here. Uh remove stuff ooh okay okay 
Leo does not like this. Let's cleanse him. We got the increase attack. We're gonna go in here. Krisk, oh man. Krisk with a stupid provoke, dude. Come on, man. All right, let's cycle those provokes out of our system. Ooh, look at that. Look at that health. Oh my goodness. Let's cleanse it off again. Okay, now it's our, it's our time, man. Uh, I wanna test out the A2, but there's nothing really to steal there. So let's just go with the A3 and kill everybody. All right, all right. He's, he's definitely a serviceable nuker. I'll give him that. Off the top of your heads, I wanna ask you guys this. Off the top of your heads, who would you rather for epic nukers, now that you've seen what this dude can do through a few arena battles here, who would you rather have for epic nukers over our guy Nagorio? I would rather have, oh uh, wait, where's this? <laughs> oh, the, the freaking mighty Uko stole his increase attack. I wish every increase attack was protected. We can't steal it back either with the A2. That's a bummer. Let's nuke him. This is a very tanky team, but it's okay. We're gonna go him right back in. We're gonna nuke him again. Uh, I would go with the thing that the, the reason I like Gembo better than this champion is his self buffs, obviously, right? We talked about that already. And I also love oh, Mighty Uko. I hate Mighty Uko. I love him. I hate going against him. Let's try to steal. I can't steal from Duchess because she's going to be too, uh, too much resistance, right? Yeah. Boom. Okay, I think we're going to lose this one, guys. I think we're going to lose it. Let's see, though. Oh, boy. Yeah, we don't have a reviver. Yeah, that's going to be toast. I would go with Gembo because he's Void Affinity, right? And I would also go with... Uh, void Affinity plus the increased crit damage really helps a lot. Uh... I think I would also go with Magnar over him because, oof, I didn't even see how much damage it did. That was a nuke. He's like, oh yeah, Magnar, son, boom. <laughs> okay, okay, I hear you. All right, all right, let's go against this squad here. Uh, I was gonna, Magnar has a double hitter that hits very hard and he's versatile enough to use on go second teams. So I go Magnar as well. Uh, you know who hits really hard? Morag, Bronzelock, uh, Dirindil. I would say those are the champions that I would put in the kind of the same conversation as him. But I might take him over Dirindil and Morag. Uh, let's see. Who else would I take him over? A lot of legendaries. A lot of legendary. There's a lot of, like, mediocre legendary nukers out there. The thing about him is I like the synergy that comes with all that increased attack stuff that he's doing. Now, we haven't really haven't been able to get much utility out of his A2 thus far. Oh, well, that was his A2. That was pretty cool. Uh, Cardinal, I didn't even see you over there. Let's remove that stone skin. There we go. Now, let's put the, uh, let's redo the increase attack. Okay, redemption. That didn't hurt. That didn't hurt. I'm in heaven. I'm lying, it hurt a lot. But yeah, overall, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I, I sound like I'm talking smack about this champion. That was a big nuke too. I sound like I'm talking smack about this champion. I'm really not, right? I think this team is too tanky for me with Pythion and Duchess, all that damage mitigation. Eh. Uh, I actually think that YST was, was right in terms of calling this dude a secret weapon. Man, I must have missed the fusion. I'll be honest with you guys. Oops. We really need an Arbiter on this team instead of a Mithrala because we need a Revive on this team in case that happens. They go first, right? But I will say that, dude, this guy can nuke, man. He can hit. He can hit very, very hard. Let's see if we can beat this team speed-wise. And uh, let's see. Come in here. I think he... Ah, they go before us. They cut us in line. I just need, don't, don't hold these losses against the champion. I just don't have a speed team properly built here. I'm just hoping that I go first, you know? Uh, let's go against this squad. And then, because my Kaimar is fast, but he's not that fast. 312, I mean, we're talking like 400 speed on some of these Arbiters that we're going against. So, uh, or at least, I don't know about these Arbiters, but about, against the Arbiters that I'm typically going against in the live arena, at least, right? But I have to say, man, if I had this dude on my on my mini account, I was always gonna say free to play, but on my mini account, I would definitely uh, 
I would invest, man. Like, the, he smacks, man. He smacks. So, what is the overall? I think I've proved my point here in the video, hopefully, right? So, what is my last, my final thoughts on this champion? Is that he's dang cool. He's worth investing in if you're looking for a fun arena nuker, fire knight nuker, or shadowkin faction war nuker, right? All those areas. That was a, that was a big, big boy nuke too. You see that 134,000 damage? That was pretty dang solid there on the single target on the A2. And then he goes in again. That was 63k. As if you guys can't see. Overall, man, very, very quality nuker. I think he's a top five. Top five epic arena nuker. Massive shout out to YST. You guys should go watch that video right now if you didn't click off already. Find out why he loves him and see him in different areas of the game. And give him a try and fire knight as well. I think that people are really sleeping on this champion in terms of being a very, very capable epic damage dealer out there. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.